But uh, this is our Thursday morning call. And anybody else want to say hello before we get started? I know we have a lot of people on the line. That's great, doing different things. I love it, I love it, I love it. Enjoying the sunshine. That's always great, too. And uh, I don't know what kind of weather we've, we've been having the last couple of days, but that's what they say about Colorado, definitely Colorado Springs, that uh, you could have all four seasons in one day. And that could be in the middle of the, in the, middle of the summer. It doesn't matter. Some, a friend of mine posted uh, the day of the 4th of July or the day before, she had hailstorms coming down <laughs> in Colorado Springs. And, and then that's another thing that's interesting. It, it, where you're located in the city determines what kind of weather you're getting. So it can be, it can be kind of crazy, especially with the mountains right there. But it's a lovely view. You have the big, beautiful Pikes Peak Mountain. People come from all over the world just to go up uh, to the top of that mountain. And we have a cog rail that uh, you don't have to drive. Rick and I have driven a few times, a couple of times. It was like, okay, we're done. And then you take the bus, uh, well, a little shuttle van to the top. And uh, it, it's really, it's really um, breathtaking. Or it can be really scary, depending on how you are with heights. But people do come to see that. And that's just one of the beautiful sightseeing things that happen in the United States, because I know everybody wants to travel all around the world, which is great. You know, I, I, I'm an advocate of de destination travel, going around the world, seeing places that you would never see. I love that. But let's not forget all that we have in our backyard, because we have so many great things in our backyard that we miss, you know, and we don't even see in a lifetime. I know Yellowstone is right up here and people come from all over the world to see Yellowstone Park and the geyser where it just keeps blowing up and down, up and down. And so that's really great. And then you can go to Mexico, uh, Ensenada, Mexico, and they have a La Bufadora, which is the same type of geyser and the water just spews up. And we've seen that. So there's so many things, and I'm quite sure there are more throughout the world, but find out what your passion is. Find out what you love doing. And if it's a road trip, you know, our CEO bought some big um, motor coach, and he's going around the world now, just, uh, well, at least around the U.S. in his motor coach. And so find out what you love and 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 head for it. You know, we're looking at different um, model homes now. And uh, I always go to these huge things. I, I, I fall in love with the five bedroom, three bath. And it's like, you've done that. And my, my daughter, I was talking to her last night and she, she hit it right on the head. And um, she said, mom, you already had your dream house. You gonna, you gonna build another one? And I just started laughing. I went, oh, that's right. It's just me and your dad, right? I'm not supposed to have five bedrooms. I'm not supposed to have, and it's not so much not supposed to have because you can have whatever you want. But our goal uh, was to just get something quaint, you know, where we can just kind of stop in, travel, come back, stop in, travel. And here I am finding myself going to something big where it's like, okay, I got to hire somebody. I'm not cleaning that third bedroom. Don't go in there because I don't have to clean that. You know, so It's like, why do we go always back to the same thing? And then I'm on the different social media pages and seeing all these big, beautiful houses and these big, beautiful white kitchens. And it's almost like, but do you want that? You really, not right now. And uh, not on our, what I call our third quarter uh, of our life, not fourth, but third and so why do you want to have to be bogged down with all that cleaning and all that? Yeah, you hire someone. I've tried that. You hire somebody, but then you leave and you come back and it's like, oh, I wish they can come in and clean before I get there. And all of this can be done, but I'd rather just have something that I can maintain, travel, leave it, come back, enjoy it, travel come back, enjoy it. So it was, it was an interesting conversation. And for my, my daughter to say, mom, you've already built your dream house. Do you want to build another one? I thought, wow, 
I never looked at it like that. I never looked at it like that. And then I thought, well, yeah, when you dream, you can have anything you, your heart desires. So yeah, maybe I do want to, <laughs> maybe I do want to build another one and then have someone come in and help me keep it clean and organized. I could do that. So it's just fun to dream. It's just fun to uh, sit back and do what you want to do when you want to do it. And that's what this business is so great at. And with that, um, tonight, the company is having a, um, a company-wide call. And so usually on Thursday night, Rick and I have a presentation. So respect for the company and not trying to split people's attention because our presentation starts exactly uh, the time that the company call is going to start. So what we're going to do is we're just going to direct everyone to the company call tonight and uh, hear what Scott and Chris are sharing. I don't know if they're going to introduce a new contest. I have no idea what they're going to say. Uh, Vaughn really gave us a little hint, but nothing worth sharing. So we will uh, hear with everybody tonight on what the company is talking about and um, what we have to do in order to succeed so we can decide if we want to uh, own another 5,000 square foot home <laughs> and hire somebody to come in, you know, once or twice a month to help you keep it up and organized. But that's what's so great about dreaming because you can pretty much have whatever you want. And definitely when it comes to traveling, traveling, you can do that however you want to do. Because we're in the travel business, we can get creative. I, I My hat's off to Adrian Tillman and Willie, how they found that lovely little Airbnb in Jamaica, you know, and the price was so reasonable. And, and to be in that whole atmosphere, the way they shared it with us with pictures and talking about it, and the gentleman with all his wise wisdom knowledge uh, with Jamaica and the foods they got to try, that's what it's all about. So don't think that when you travel, you have to do all this and this. Travel within your means. Travel where you're comfortable. And you'll be surprised all the great deals that you can get. One thing we were looking at, because I know a lot of, you, we all know that Southwest bag fries free. And then, but Southwest, if you go on their website, their prices have been high. But then again, high is relative because when you fly another airline that might be $100 cheaper, by the time you pay for your luggage fee, and that's $60 round trip, well, there's $120 that you could have saved if you were on Southwest. But everybody has their preference of what airlines they like to fly, and that's great too. And you can get your frequent flyer miles. There's so many different creative ways to fly. And I always end up, because I, you know, you, the cookies and I stop on travel, I get all types of travel information and travel hacks and how to travel here and how to travel if you're going to Europe and how to travel as a single woman. I get all of these information and what it boils down to is just take your time, map out what you want to do, when you want to do it, and go have fun doing it. And if you have a large family, maybe it's cheaper to rent an RV, you know, and, and drive to where you guys want to go. Or may, like I was listening about this one family of seven. They lived in South Carolina and they wanted to go to Europe to visit family. So the tickets were going to be, I think, $1,000 a piece. So you're looking at $7,000 and blah, blah, blah. So they were just adding it up for the mother and father to take all five kids. So that was, you know, seven of them, however. And so what they found was they could leave out of Dallas Airport in Washington, D.C. for $400 round trip per person. So they took their car and they drove to Washington, D.C., parked their car in long-term parking, got on the flight, you know, whatever, did whatever, came back, got in their car, drive seven hours back home. That trip, that, that just driving the seven hours saved them $6,000 for that trip. 
And so when you're going to travel, just get creative. I know when Rick and I travel, we might look for a round trip and then we'll turn around and look for one way. And then what's the one way coming back? And however you can save, that's, that's fun. Because then with us, it all falls down to now we have more money to eat with, you know, so now we have money to go and explore all these restaurants that we have seen on TV. So it's all about what you want to do and how you want to do it. And then you'll have some people, no, I'm going to pay first class because I like first class. And uh, when I get where I'm going, you know, if I have to eat at a small place here or there and not at the fancy restaurants, then that's what I'll do. And then you have those people, which is great, who can do it all. You know, I can travel first class and I could eat in a, a high end restaurant. So wherever your budget falls, that's a good thing. What you want to do is make sure you're doing it. Make sure you're enjoying whatever's going on right now in your life. And you're not sitting back wishing and waiting and hoping for someday. Someday is today. So you cannot delay. You got to get out there. You got to travel. You got to see the world. And there's so much in your backyard. I know when people come to visit us in Colorado, the first thing they want to do is go up to Pikes Peak. <laughs> it's like, okay, here we go. And uh, depending on who it is, we'll drive or we will take the cog rail. Usually we take the cog rail um, because then that way we can laugh and talk. Uh, it goes up real steep. It's a really interesting train ride. And then we get to walk around, see the sights get back on the train and go back down. But uh, it's fun, you know, and people really enjoy doing that. So I know there has to be some, I know when we came to Seattle, Rick and I got on, we went to the top of the needle because that's what we heard we had to do. And, you know, so we do our homework and that's another thing, do your homework. So when you do go visit these different cities, you'll know what to see. And that's what Rick and I do. Even when we go out of country and we go to different places, we always do our homework. So you know what to see, you know what not to miss. So when you get home and you start getting all this information about the, the country you just left, it's like, oh, I missed that. Oh, I didn't get to see that. So map out what you want to see. Make sure you get to, to see it. I know that Rastafarian excursion that we went on in uh, Jamaica, Rick found out about that because there's a travel agent in Canada that he works with. And she told us that's something that you really have to do while you're there. And because we were a travel agent, she was able to uh, make that happen for us. And that was really an experience to say that we have done that. So definitely what's in your backyard, even if you just, you know, rent an RV and go, I know Rick's brother did that one year um, with, with his kids, and they almost made it to Colorado, but because of their religion, and they had to get ready for their Shabbat, because they're Jewish, his wife's Jewish, they had to get back home to start uh, their prayer sundown on Friday. So everybody's different, but it worked for them. They had fun. It's memories because he's now gone home to glory. And there's memories that those kids will always have with dad. You know, they have a video of him driving, singing Route 66, you know. And so those are memories that they will never, never forget. And, and then having it on video and being able to laugh about it, you know, laugh through the tears because you miss him, but you do remember how much fun you had when he was with you. So you just can't just go in day in, day out, even if it's just a Saturday picnic, even if it's just a walk in the sunshine like Chantel is doing. You want to get out. You want to do something. And all of those things really matter because it's about enjoying life and making sure that you're not just sitting around and watching the day go by. Uh, one, I heard this one gentleman, he said, because I was talking about it's cold here in Colorado, uh, and then you have people complaining that it's hot in the South. Uh, in Miami, it's going to be this temperature, this temperature. And he said something I thought was really clever. He said, well, you know, the temperature in my house is always the same. 
So it really, and, and that's just how you look at it. Instead of complaining about the snow or complaining about the heat, you're not in the element. So whatever temperature you have your home, you're comfortable in that temperature. So I thought that was really good, uh, the way he had that outlook on that, not worrying about what's going on inside, but you're inside and the temperature is good. So that's what's so great about our lives is that are you inside or are you outside? The temperature can be whatever you want it to be. And when you're dealing with that, enjoy it because time goes. And of course, like we know and like we're seeing, time stops for no one. So you want to make sure you enjoy all that's around you, you know, all that's around you because it's there and why not? And even with us going to Miami, we've been to Miami several times. So this is not our first trip, but we, you know, we've been to South Beach. So if we go to South Beach, probably not because <laughs> we've been to South Beach a couple of times, but there'll be other places that we'll go uh, and check it out. There'll be new restaurants that we find and uh, eat at. And so, cause we've been to, we're staying in Boca Raton and we've been over to their beach and they had a, a little restaurant that was really good. And we'll find a um, a restaurant that's on the, what is that, the boardwalk and eat. So it's so much stuff to do. And it's so many things to be, have fun about. But you just have to find out what's in your own backyard. Even when we were in New York City, we watched this show called How, How Did They Build It? I think that's the name of it. But that's where I learned about all these suspension bridges that's literally floating in the ocean. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. And uh, and then we, we saw the park that they built in New York City, literally looks like it's on cones. And uh, we passed it, we didn't have time because it was one of those things where you would go walk around, spend the day, and we had so much to see. So we didn't have time to just go walk around in the park and spend the day. But those, that's something that people there can do. They live there, so they can take the time. And if they don't want to, because parking is, is, is uh, pretty expensive in New York City, but if you don't want to park, you live there. You can park, you can jump on the plane, train, you can jump on the bus, and you can go and spend the day at this park. And then you can, you can make that a whole outing. So there's something, there's so many things to do and so many good things to happen in our lives, what we have to do is we just have to stay focused and we have to make sure that as I'm looking at my window and the clouds seem to be getting thicker and thicker, it's okay because you could still go outside. You might not be able to see the peak today because like I said, the cloud is so thick, but you know the peak is there. And when people come to visit, that's something that they really enjoy seeing and it is breathtaking. And the air is really thin up there. So we've had visitors who come. They really want to get up there. We take them up there and they can't breathe. <laughs> we have this one joke with uh, Coach's daughter, Samantha. Uh, we had a big meeting in Denver years and years ago. She, I don't know, she might have been 12, if not younger than that. We, uh, some friends of ours, Golden and Phil Kennedy, took them to Pikes Peak. And she was so funny because she was telling her dad, there's no air up here. We can't breathe. And so that was a running joke for a while. Uh, I didn't even think about it when we were in, at her wedding to see if she would even remember that. But uh, it's just so much stuff. And even that, that was like a vacation. They came here to do a meeting, but they did take time to uh, see what was going on in Colorado and visiting the places that everybody talks about. Because once you have those memories, and even Rick, he's, he's having so much fun right now. He's putting all of our different trips that we've gone on in like a movie format. I think the only challenge for him is finding the right music to put with it. Because, you know, all with the music, everything is copyrighted. But even that, it's fun. And, and we put our niece's wedding together um, that way. And he sent her a couple of movies that he put together and her response was i'm so glad that you're documenting this 
So we thought that was funny, but that's just how she is. You know, that's how she is. And she's just that analytical blah, blah, blah. But uh, everybody, when you come, when it comes to travel, everybody wants to travel. Even if it's just, uh, you know, a city away, everybody wants to take the time to travel, to see what's going on. Uh, even in our city, uh, our bigger city, uh, Denver, people fly into Denver and they go here and go there. Skiing is a big deal here. Hiking is a big deal. People want to hike and get up in the mountains and all of that stuff. So wherever you are, whatever is there, just get out, enjoy. I enjoyed Chantel's video that she did where she was sitting in front of her house and showed the parade that uh, came by her house. Those are memories that you can never, ever replace. And everybody was just laughing and the people were coming, o coming over and I could tell from the video, they were giving Micah stuff and she was like, thank you, thank you. <laughs> but, and it just looked like it was so much fun that they were having with a parade. Can you imagine a parade coming down your street? So that's some good stuff. That's some memory stuff. And with that, it reminded me when we took our kids to Seattle, no, not Seattle, um, San Francisco, no, San Diego. And we went over to Coronado Island. We love Coronado Island. They have a naval base on Coronado Island, and they have a beautiful hotel that they built up right on the beach. And so staying there is like staying in a beautiful, and it is, it's a really lovely hotel. And we took our kids and we had so much fun and we sat outside and we had our little um, chairs and we watched the parade go by with the flags and, and that kind of stuff is so, so much fun. Now the tree has disappeared. As I, <laughs> as I looked out, out my window, there's a big tree and uh, can't see that tree anymore. But this is, this is so fun. It's just like, I'm, I'm really enjoying, this is so funny watching how, the clouds are coming in, but you have to watch the clouds come in. It's like watching the grass grow. You got to do something. You got to get out. You got to enjoy life. You got to travel. And there's so many people that want to travel, but they don't know how to travel. And just by you saying to them, oh, you could do this. You could do this. We could put a group together. You don't have to be by yourself and, and just go have a great time. I, I was uh, doing some research. And I learned that you can take a train uh, from, oh, was it, was it Paris? I don't remember. You could take a train into Venice and uh, just walk around Venice. And they have all these beautiful, I guess, sidewalks. And then you walk across a little bridge and you watch the little boats go by. And that seemed like it was so much fun. And I definitely have put that on my live list because that's something that I want to do. I want to take a train and I want to walk around and see and shop and just enjoy the food and the people. And that's something that you could do. Just like in New York City, we walked around New York City, we saw the pizza and we had pizza and, you know, so there's so many different things to do. Did somebody want to uh, share? Yeah, I love how you're just you're just painting a picture and um, yeah. as you're talking we can we can we can see the picture and uh and one of the things like you're saying is how important it is to live your life in the moment because those yeah. moments pass so quickly and uh yeah. you know and if you don't if you you miss don't miss those moments you know whether it be the parade walking by your house, you know, going by your house. That's a moment in time. And uh, and it's amazing how many lives are, are part of your moment in time. You know, even just the parade going by, you know, and all of the things that, uh, that we did in New York City and uh, the hop on, hop off bus and going up to the edge and seeing the skyscapes and the sunset on the Hudson. Those are moments. You know, the things that we did in Boston, you know, the things that we did as a team in Jamaica and um, <laughs> and it's all laughing on on that little van, you know, in that little van as we was just doing going to from one excursion to another 
and and then going through those little towns and uh and getting the story on these little towns and in the one place we went through that had the street lights but the, the guy said well you know they don't work <laughs> you gotta pay your electric bill as a little town but those whole experiences you know and going to port fort charlotte and you know going down to rick's cafe and seeing the divers and just that whole feeling of of the music playing and the people diving and people laughing and having a great time those are moments cherished moments and um and so we all have those experiences and so as you're talking brenda you know you're actually triggering memories and those are the memories you know that will never ever leave us and um it's just it's just beautiful but you got to live your life you know in the moment and even creating and searching out those moments is i think so important and uh but i just i just love what you're saying because it's it's taken me back and you know of course moving forward to the vision also back to you that's true. That is so true. Anybody else? I know when you and even and even when we talk about, you know, different places, how would the cruise line and uh, and I keep saying it, I keep saying it, but I have to do, I have to get you to Commodore status, because when I get you to Commodore status, mm -hmm. that's another trip. I know I keep saying it and really it would just take doing one class even if i just did one class a week mm -hmm. and, then, and then we have the and, <laughs> and then we have the canard i mean that's three cruises and for mm -hmm. folks who haven't even taken their first commodore that's four cruises you have my bag and if you live you got your bags packed ready to go and that's four cruises that you could take for free being in this business and so, and if you live close to a port and you haven't taken advantage of that yet, oh man, come on. If I was close to a port, which I'm going to be close to a port soon, I am going to, uh, every time you turn around, I'm gonna find out who my um my business representative is for Carnival because Carnival cruises out of Charleston and Rick and I have taken that cruise before. And even that's a lovely story. It was a last minute, thing that our son did for us for our anniversary. I forget what year it was. And we were down visiting my father and he said, mom, you guys want to do a cruise? I went, yeah, he says, and then we went, worked it all out and he goes, okay, go. And so it was the last minute. And of course, all of the, uh, was it balconies? I think all the balconies were filled up, but we went anyway and we decided, okay, we're going to just make fun of what we have and uh we got and then and then to make matters worse it was bunk beds so that was really funny it was like okay here we are we're gonna go on a honeymoon cruise we're staying in an inside cabin and we have bunk beds but nope we always look at the bright side the bright side is you're on a cruise and you don't have to stay in your cabin you use that pretty much just to sleep change go out sleep change go out and so that's how we were going to look at it so we go to uh, sign up and, you know, get your uh, sailing card. And so, you know, us, we don't, we, we do not hesitate when it comes to tell stories. So we're telling this lady about, yeah, we're on our, we're on our honeymoon. And uh, I mean, we're on our anniversary and our son decided at the last minute to uh, send us on this cruise. And this is the, 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 and so we're just talking and laughing and talking with the lady, laughing and talking with the lady. And she comes back and she says, oh, well, you guys are in luck because we just had a lady and her daughter cancel and they're in a balcony suite. And she said, and we'll have your porter break it down to a king bed because, you know, they break those beds down really fast. So, yes. So we ended up on our anniversary. I don't even remember what, what year of that it was what how many years it was but we ended up on that carnival ship in a balcony suite with a king size bed and so that's why you just have to keep looking at the bigger size because even though we love balconies and we prefer a balcony we were willing to do <clears throat> the inside cabin 
because he was so excited about doing that for us. And we were like, are you kidding me? You did it. But no, it was because he was so excited. And then, of course, when we got into our room, we called him and we told him what, was, what happened. He was so happy for us. And see, that's why you have to just keep moving forward because we could have said, no, nah, we'll try another time because I'm not staying in no inside cabin and twin beds. Are you kidding me? Blah, blah. But no, we just looked at the bright side, like, let's go. It'll be fun. We don't have to stay in our cabin. You know, we could stay on the, on the Lido deck and, you know, Guy Burgers, whatever the case may be. But it turns out that we got a balcony suite for that anniversary. Yeah, so I don't you, need to things like. It's like I'm hearing this yeah. story for the first time. That's an awesome story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hope you remember it. <laughs> I do now. You were with me. Yeah, you remember that. Wasn't that something? Oh, that's too funny. I, I do now, you know, and that's one of the things <laughs> like you <said. laughs> I would have never been able to tell that story. I, all I remember from that story, except for now, is your dad dropping us off and wishing he could come on the right. cruise. In right. Yeah, he sure did. But yeah, yeah that's, he that's sure so did. Sweet. You know, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. and now, of course, I remember. I would have never told the story because I totally forgot it until you just brought it up now. But we did when we went to the county. Yeah. And, uh, and that brings up a good point. You know, let people know your situation, good or bad. And, and, it, and because Glenn said favor, and that is favor. And we walk in that favor and everybody on this call, you know, walks in that favor. Jackie walks in that, when you see Jackie's pictures from the Dominican uh, tourism thing, she walks in that favor. You know, why do people do things for us? It's because we exude, you know, the favor of God. And, uh, and if it's within their ability, you know, as we exude the favor of God, People will always come to help, to assist, you know, to do whatever they can do within their power. And it isn't by coincidence, I believe, that when we went to that, that counter talking to customer service, that, you know, they let us know the lady and her daughter just canceled. That's not a coincidence. That happens to us and the people on this call all the time, right? <laughs> And so much so that it becomes an expectation. And when it doesn't happen, we're like, huh? <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> and then even in that, we find out that the better thing happens for us. Even in that, like all things work together for our good. All things work together for our good. I was on a call this morning before this call, and thank you, thanks for reminding me of this call, Brenda, because I was on this call with this gentleman that came into the business about five years ago, and that came, in, came into Surge. And he's been in, hasn't done anything, but he's been a close friend. He lives in, in Detroit, and he has another business. And so for the first time, he had me talk to one of his other employees who's helping him out in his other business last week. And he says, Rick, she's going through a depression and um, and would love for you just to just to say hi to her. And uh, he had told me this about a week ago. I said, uh, you know, a couple of days ago, I said, well, let's talk to her now. And so he gets me on the phone with her. And she kind of knows about the travel business, but she's really an employee with his other business. And so I started talking to her, you know, about travel. And everybody on this call knows that when you start talking about travel, every, the people you talk to perk up. You know, there's a, there's a, there's a beautiful spirit that comes along with travel. And uh, because everybody knows that's a lifestyle that they want. So I'm talking to her, talking to her, and uh, telling her about these different trips and things that we're doing and uh, things that we're planning. She got so excited. And uh, all that depression thing left that she was going and growing through and said, hey, can you guys adopt us, my, my husband and I? <laughs> you know, she got so excited. We are holding on to something. And uh, that is a conversation that people are waiting to hear. What Absolutely. 
Go ahead, Glenn. You, you know, Rick, I, I'm going to share this <laughs> because it, you're, you just took me there. Uh, a couple of days ago, um, I got a call from a very close friend of ours that uh, we were stationed with several times and once in Europe uh, with their family, we became uh, very close like family. And uh, we were in, we were stationed in Germany and our unit deployed to Denmark. And while we were up in Denmark uh, during some off time, and, and this friend that called me is facing some very serious uh, health challenges right now. And uh, I was kind of waiting for, to hear from him. And uh, he finally called me at a perfect time. It was early. He lives in uh, where he's from. He lives where Vaughn is from, actually Saginaw, Michigan. And he called me uh, to catch up on things. And before it was over, I wound up talking, we, we wound up talking for two hours. And then see, to show you how therapeutic travel memories are, he, he shared a memory that I had totally forgot about. And Chantel was listening during this time because I put her on to say hello. And uh, he shared the memory where on some of our off time, we got on a train uh, from the west coast of Denmark and rode that train into Copenhagen. And on our way in, <clears throat> We took a train and this train actually rolled into a, a ferry, a big ship. And the ship crossed the channel and then the train rolled off and took us into, into Copenhagen. Just, just an awesome experience. But while we were on the train, and I'm always one to just, I'm gonna walk around in, in, in it <laughs> and check things out. So I walked a couple cars up from, from where our group was sitting and I entered a car uh, with all children in it. And we were wearing sweatsuits. And I had just bought the sweatsuit. It was purple, looked like the Lakers. And when, we, when I walked into that, that uh, train car with those children, they all jumped up and pointed at me. They don't see a lot of us over there. They all pointed at me and they started saying, Magic Johnson, Michael Jordan. I mean, we, <laughs> we fell out laughing. I went back, got my boys. We went back into that train car and these children were ready. We were up there signing autographs. <laughs> Glenn Hayden, Glenn Hayden, <laughs> Michael Jordan. They were so excited. That it was just, it was a priceless, priceless memory. And we laughed so hard. We forgot about all the troubles and, and, and heartache and all that stuff. And we were in good spirits when that call ended. So very much therapeutic is the travel and the sharing of the memories. Back to you, Rick. Oh man, that's good. That that's is so, good. that is so good. Hey Ron and Linda. Yeah. Good man. afternoon. How are you? Doing oh, fantastic. Thank you. I just want to thank you for those um, videos that you sent out. I've been sending them out all over the place. First of all, the review of the Memorial Day uh, and the AAVM, the African American Veterans Monument, that you did such an incredible job. And um, this morning I got it off to Van Taylor and I got it off to uh, uh, Dale Martin, a couple of our buddies who are very, very active in the community that are going to, and I know Dale already told me he appreciates it. He was really excited when he got to watch it. Um, and then the other video I was just watching this morning, catching up on things. Um, it's glad to be, well said, it's glad to be back. And uh, Linda will be joining us just a minute. We came through. We're actually on her computer today because mine was not accepting us getting in. So we just got behind a little bit. Sorry to everybody. We don't like to be late. Even when this starts, we miss. I know we've already missed some stuff, and we don't like to miss anything. Um, I will mention that we uh, we made our reservation to be in Cancun with everybody ooh, next ooh, March. Ooh. You know, dancing in the moonlight. We're going to be doing it again, guys. <laughs> and you know when you called and you was mentioning that i uh i went on i went to look at it <laughs> for the fireworks <laughs> so yeah thank you thank you for doing that yeah we were just talking about and glenn was just sharing you know how travel memories are therapeutic and uh and and you're right the videos that i put together when i look at those something inside of me just just gets happy 
And uh, I don't know if it's just the music or the pictures, probably the combination of both. Uh, but the music was great. The yeah. selection that you utilized, I, I was thinking of um, uh, Ray Charles. He did the rendition of that America. I just, That's right. I got goosebumps just when you mentioned it, Rick, here right now. Yeah. Um, just incredible. Yeah. Did you notice, I don't know, did I, maybe I wasn't, I'm not the only one. Did you notice all the coverage, no matter what part of the country you saw coverage from different celebrations? It wasn't just on the 4th, it was on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, too. Uh, every day of the whole weekend, the 4th of July weekend, there was great celebration. There was great joy. There was great patriotism being shown everywhere you went. I was really impressed by that. To see that that told me that that really told me. Guess what, guys? The past is the past. We're going forward. Hey, man. You know, we actually saw fireworks at Fort Carson here on Friday. I think it was the Friday, and uh, so we got my I, I got my my fireworks fix in, <laughs> and I think they still did it on the fourth, but it was kind of rainy during the day. But I believe it actually cleared up yep. enough for them to do it. But we just watched it on TV on the fourth. But you're right, though. Yeah, it poured. No it poured rain from morning till night on the fourth, and uh, on Sunday too, when we were planning on having our picnic. Um, a big picnic we usually do. But anyways, in spite of that, we just had wonderful times. Uh, um, a friend of the uh, uh, the Hopkins collection and a friend of ours that we're working through, um, working get him through the process of getting started in his brain. It's a process. For us, it's not. But uh, his name is uh, Give, uh, Gavin Johns. He's a major league baseball player. Last year, he actually played. He swung the bat in two games, one in the, with the Cubs and one with the Colorado Rockies. And uh, right now, he's in a farm team in, um, down in Maryland. And uh, he got up to bat a couple months ago, and uh, he got hit with a 91-mile-an-hour baseball, fastball. Hit him right here. Broke his uh, broke his arm in half. Ouch! Right, I don't know. So he has a plate and screws. They just uh, took the staples out of the holding everything together, and uh, he's in rehab now. And of course, his his original dream was to become a major league baseball player. But you know, as we go along <laughs> in life, things happen, and we may have another path that we're being directed to go down. It's true. He's 28 years old, and it's not that it couldn't happen, but the likelihood is not as bright as it might have been. Not with Tommy Johns and this elbow injury or arm injury. So he's looking right now. He's searching for a great new path to go down. And we've introduced him to the path that you know, all of us have, have decided to take as a career choice in a way that we can add to accomplish what we want to accomplish or what we feel led to. And um, he's going through that process right now. He's not quite ready uh, to accept that going forward in baseball is not going to be the way. But he does realize he has to start looking at other options. And um, when he was in church on Sunday, he he was he was really blessed. Our pastor, had, um, it turns out, I didn't know this, our pastor was a family of baseball players. He even had a a, a cousin who was on the Pittsburgh Pirates when Barry Bonds played when they won the World Series. They haven't won it again in a long time. But he's got all these family members, and he played ball. So there was a great relationship connection that was made. And um, we had he and Pastor and others prayed over him. And, his, um, of course, we want to restore his health and um, his ability to uh, perform at any level that we can. But, you know, it's about helping him realize that there's still room for a new dream. That's good. And I think sometimes right. we run into people that the timing, we might just be ahead of the curve a little bit for him. He, he knows what he's got to do, just that he hasn't let go yet. You know, I Linda made a, um, a, in our bathroom, she's got this frame picture thing and it has little, she has postcards and then she's written little sayings. And one of the sayings is you can't get off the shore if you you can't get to the other side of the shore if you don't take your foot off the beach. 
you got to let go. You in order to move forward, you got to allow yourself to be free to move in a new direction. And sometimes we're we're talking to people, and you know, and I know, without a question, they're capable of doing what we're doing. But their timing may not be right. It just may not be the right time. So True. I have a number 23 in my list of thoughts that I sometimes share with people. Number 23 is leave them alone. They'll come home wagging their tails behind them. And, um, you know, I had stopped kind of chasing after Gavin for a little while because the boy, I, I, when I first met him, I thought this was perfect. And it is. But the timing wasn't right then. It still isn't. But I'm not going to give up on him. But I can't wait for him either. You know, there's other people that God wants me to touch their lives. That's the message I'm trying to share today is and we, if we spend too much time trying to move a block that's not ready to move, we're not only burning our energy, but we're not able to help somebody else. That's good. That'll preach right there. Hey, Ron. Yes, sir. <laughs> Hey, I just thought of, I just thought of something here in your testimony, and I got something to tell to, that you could relay to your friend and his son, and everything and is is for all of us really is is not focusing on what could have been, but redirecting you to where you can be. So Amen. instead of focusing on uh, what if I what if what if what if, focus on what now. You know, and if that's not a depressing or a, a downing kind of focus, you know, you be encouraged because now you were focused on this one thing, but now look at everything that's open to you now. And I, I relate to that in my situation to where I could have went down one path and had a career and whatever, but what happened to me in developing multiple sclerosis and I could have been down there, you know, and depressed, but look what came to me now. And the whole world has just opened up to me, not knowing I would have even been over here on this phone. <laughs> you know, you never know what God kept you from to take you to, you know, it's, it's a, we always look at, Oh man, I should, I should have, I could have, I, I would, <laughs> instead of dwelling on that dwell on okay what do i do now and start building something new and have fun doing that because i am i'm enjoying yeah. it <laughs> hey, i can't wait till we get back out on the beach again guys you know remember we just finished dinner and we had to run because the party was on the other side of the the uh, back of the restaurant was like um uh sh shades uh, like uh boards that were made into like a um a shade and uh, it was dinner time, but it was also party time. It was, we were having a uh, moonlight dance under the stars on the beach with the, band, with the DJ. And I just remember me and I, Rick introduced me, a great friend of his, a Gideon brother. And we were dancing and talking to people, talking to Rick, and talking to, uh, to Scott and uh, Dwayne and everybody. And just really just talking about sharing about how we'd come from this came into this weekend and the world was still shut down if you remember guys the world was still shut down yeah we did we kept moving we kept going forward and um, I'm glad we did that because it would have been easy to sit home and say well you can't you know the reason I, Lynn and I went is they told us well you would go and uh, I said, what can happen you know suddenly if I come up with a uh, COVID no, that's terrible if you get that sick. And I'm not sure that some form we didn't have something because we did have some flu, but we didn't get uh, diagnosed with COVID. But, you know, if we got there, there was this thing that if, if they tested you and you showed positive, you were going to have to stay all expenses paid at the resort <laughs> for a few more days. A few well, more days in yeah. paradise. Yeah. How does a person, how does a person determine their the right vision for their future you know you you really can't you know that's something you got to walk into you just got to walk it out <laughs> and and the light comes on you know for gavin for all of us on this call you know everybody is is searching 
for the right future uh, and the right vision. And it's one of those things that you walk out moment by moment, living in the present, you know, becoming your best self, you know, and, um, and continually becoming your best self. And I was listening to, I think it may have been Earl Nightingale or one of, one of the motivational speakers. And he says, your income is in direct proportion to your service. The income that you make now is in direct proportion to your service to humanity. And when you think about that, it's so true. If you want to change your income, you change your level of service to humanity. You become a person of value. You bring value to the marketplace, not your need. You know, what value are you bringing to the marketplace? Ooh. And Rick, go right ahead. What you just said, that last statement you just said, you said you bring your service level, you don't to do it to your need, you do it, you, you know, the way you said that, which just struck me. Um, I don't know if you can say it again. No, I can't. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you sure? But I could, you, I could, really, I could. But you bring was, value. You don't bring need to the marketplace. You bring right. value to you know to the marketplace, and and over time, and over consistency, it's not just money that you receive. You know, you you receive other things. You receive a return. You receive that joy. And um, you receive of, of helping people like Ryan, you, you and Linda do this all the time. Everywhere you're at, you know, you're on assignment. Everybody on this call, wherever you're at, God put because of your consistency, because of who you are in him, he He puts you on, assi on assignment wherever you go. Right? You choose to say, okay, I accept this assignment. Or, uh, <laughs> This is a call for champions. And uh, Edward Taylor, you are a champion's champion. Never a whiny moment. I mean, raising four, <laughs> four boys, uh, your daughter, keeping the family running. He's active. I mean, never a, a, a sad word, just always mot motivating. Uh, everybody on this call has been through tremendous uh, trials the last few years, everybody has experienced, uh, as, as most of us had never been challenged before, but that's one good thing about this call to, to come together and uh, share experiences and keep sharpen each other's iron. Go ahead, Rick, back to you. And, uh, you know, and it's true. So I was telling the story earlier of the gentleman that's in the business and has a lady working and they had me talk to her. He had, he had me talk to her. And so I'm saying, yeah, we're in travel and da, 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 and we travel and we have fun. And she got so excited. Can you adopt us? Me and my husband. And, uh, you know, I mean, I'm just talking to her, talking to her, talking to her. And I said, you know, I'm going to send you some videos. And so I sent her the Niagara video and, a few of the other videos and she got so excited so excited and so my friend called me today and said rick she resigned <laughs> <laughs> i think you made her too excited man <laughs> she said she, she he said she told me that i was holding out on her on the travel side <laughs> are you serious oh no <laughs> So she got upset with him. <laughs> I said, now, she was going to resign anyway. Yeah, any yeah, excuse yeah. will do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Any excuse will do. You can't yeah. resign over she happiness. Looking, yeah, she was looking for a reason to leave. Yeah, yeah. She was looking for a reason to leave. I said, a person... A person can take things. We all have our perspectives. And you, when you, when you see any situation, you choose the perspective that you want. So I told him, I said, hey, she could have said, man, there's so much more than what you was offering me. 
Mm-hmm. You know, I need to meet the people that you know and and get involved with the people that da da da. You know, versus you've been holding out on me. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you just said something super profound. And my translation of it in short is, you know, you can either get what life brings to you or you can dictate what life brings to you. You know, you can make a choice to stay where you at, stay where you are, (laughs) you know, or make a course correction. And right. you have that freedom, especially in this country, you have that freedom to do it. And I think that's the one of the main things that goes unlooked and, and or looked over is the fact that we live in a country where you have that freedom. People some sometimes say, you know, it is restricted, blah, blah, blah. If you see it that way, then it is, you know, but if you see the landscape as wide open as I do, and I look mm-hmm. at a great giant mountain every morning when the sun's out and that thing's gleaming and shining i'm like what a great god we have that would make such a display for me to look at and appreciate every day how can i be sad yes how can i be sad i'm going after this thing (laughs) hey chantel Uh, you can stay where you at if you want to you know what (laughs) i am over here walking the champion lifestyle and this is what i want to say to that that just I just stopped and had to pause on that. I said, are you kidding me? <laughs> See, we get to choose. We're, we're sitting up in the greatest celebration of freedom, right? And you know we're a military retired family, so we, we're all up in that freedom walk, right? Encouraging people. You have to choose freedom, people. You know, you can sit there because we are fighting the real fight here. This is real deal on real soil. We are fighting to walk in freedom. Are you kidding me? If you choose to sit there and leave because that was a wide open door to help you step on in, are you serious to the beaches of the world but an extra income that could have just blessed your family to be uh, connected to this guy who opened the door for you and you missed the door? I don't know if that's coming back, but I can tell you this, we chose yes. And because we chose yes, just like Edward just said, we can't even go around the corner without seeing a mountain. And some bright eyed, I was watching families. I got on the track this morning and I was just watching what families were doing. They were getting it in. They were fathers were out there with their children. They were, you know, having car. It would just gave me a joy in my heart to see that people are still wanting to live. People still want to be free. People are living life with the family. Thank you so much for you share, Ron, every one of you. We are watching our families flourish again. And something happened to me yesterday. I was in this funk. Didn't even know it, right? Until Glenn told me, he said, you know, there was a, there was a powerful, there's a 6 a.m. prayer. I know this is not a spiritual call, but this, this was right on point. Do you know I woke up at 5.30 this morning to get on that prayer, to hear that that prayer was for me. And I, I felt something lift. I said, are you kidding me? In 15 minutes of a prayer, and then last night I heard a word that was for me, my hands were up, of this tragic thing that happened in this woman's life. Because of that, she said, he told her, he said, I got a call on your life, and you have work to do. I don't care what's going, this is what he told her. In the situations of your life, you got people that's waiting on you. You got to get up and serve. Now, I'm not taking no from you. And this is kind of the third and fourth quarter of our lives. And I posted that picture of Coach Tomer when we, we were on a coach's birthday bash. Excuse us, Noah, because I'm out here enjoying this freedom. Hello, somebody. Um, <laughs> and I, that picture came up. We just found that little tablet. And Glenn plugged it in and he was able to open it. Didn't need a passport or anything. Blew me away. But I got up in there and started looking at we got video up in that bad boy from Coach's birthday back in 2015 with Coach up there talking and sharing his heart with us. And there were some pictures of me. I had a picture with Coach, which was just, 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 just man, what a memory. And then there was a picture with Samantha, Miss Chris, and me and I was just like you know people 
we have got to value our moments. This, this is the gift we have been given. And whatever we choose to do with that, even today, like the lady, you know, I just, I feel for her. But there is a word, F-E-A-R, I'm not even going to repeat it out loud, that would try to get you in a box and hold you hostage. But it is my hand to up to date in this freedom. And I'm so glad that we choose to walk into freedom. And it is a choice. It is a decision. It is, it's moment by moment. But today is the day. So you can choose freedom. You can choose abundant life. You can choose joy. But we chose all of that. So if somebody well, you know comes what? upon us, Amen. come on now. We're going to share some life with you today. I'm the, just saying. Uh, the State of the Union now. It's due to several factors. One is the lack of belief. And a lot of what's happening is what happens when you abuse freedom or don't take advantage of it. Either way, it's a, abuse. But that's some of the main reasons uh, we are in the, this country is in the condition it's in, but not everyone. Back to you, hey, Rick. Glenn. Hey, Go Glenn, ahead, Rick. Ed. I just heard someone when my cousin was uh, talking, she talking about she spelled fear. I'll say it because I got a new definition. F is for faith. A is for action. E is for energy. R is for reality. Go get it. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. And you know, we all know the false evidence appearing real. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, and so I haven't given up on her. And because it's like us in the business and we come across these people all the time that will run from their blessing because of fear, you know, because of panic. And one thing I didn't share with you that was shared with me from the gentleman is that she's going through financial hardship, her family, her and her husband. And so she's really unstable. Most of the people that we talk to are not stable in their right mind and, and, we, and will run from the blessing, will run from the breakthrough versus running toward it. Mm -hmm. We'll choose to blame someone else, but like she's blaming him after talking to me. That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> you know? And logic she, doesn't enter in. <laughs> logic doesn't enter in. She's not stable mentally, spiritually. And a lot of times that's the first step to the fix. And mm -hmm. and quite often that's not our job. You know, we what we can do, guys, is we can just like even we, as we're meeting today at this leadership, as we can take a moment and say, Dear Heavenly Father, for those people that you brought into our circle around us. Would you lift them up, Lord, and would you free them? Would you give them the power of your Holy Spirit and dwell in them to give them the opportunity to take a step towards freedom, towards joy, towards salvation, towards life everlasting, toward all the great things that you, you're the gift, you're the great present that you, in your presence, we get. We thank you for the opportunity that, that Rick, you shared that story because another life can be touched because we just become a little more sensitive. And so thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Breakthrough is a journey. Breakthrough is a journey. I believe our job is to introduce people to the door. And of course, they've got to walk through the door and continue to walk. But breakthrough is a journey. It's an inside job where we say yes on the inside to, to, to our future, to our vision and overriding the fear. And I was just telling my friend earlier, I said, that's a person that doesn't have a vision of where they're going. If you don't have a vision of where you're going, you can't make sense of your present because you don't know who are the right friends, what are the right books I read, you know, because it, it always just kind of blurs, right? When you have a vision, now you know, okay, I need to meet these kinds of people. They're good for me. I need to read this, these kinds of books. It's good for me, you know, my speech, my thinking, you know, the vision without the vision, what people perish. Mm -hmm. And so she has obviously no vision. When people don't have a vision, 
they get caught up in distractions. We talked about that last week. They get caught up in distractions that really don't even matter to their vision. And, uh, and, but they can't determine and tell which way to go. You know, and so they get lost. We're there, you see, Ron, you and Linda do this so well, to provide clarity to people. You're providing clarity to Gavin. You know, 90 some odd mile pitch shatters his wrist. And he's like the lady I'm talking to. They're the, in the same situation. You know, they're focused on something that, that doesn't really, really matter, 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 matter. And it's because of the vision and the correct vision. And you guys took a moment this past weekend, and I applied you for it, to spend time with him. Mm-hmm. You know, to, and here, I'm going to tell you, this is the truth. What you guys did is you provided a shelter over yes. the weekend. So all the things that was coming at this is spiritual warfare. All the things that was coming at him had yeah. to hold up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, there's Ron and Linda in the game here. Let me, uh, let's take a break. <laughs> Rick. Set- well, it was a, it was a respite for him. You know, it, it was a chance for him to get away and just. We were a sanctuary. No question. We were a sanctuary. Saturday night. We um, got to feed him. <laughs> well, we fed him. You know, <laughs> the Lord say feed him. Um, it was at the That's 5,000 awesome. side of the mountain. What do we do? Ooh, well, well, you know, the disciples were wringing their hands. What do we do? He said, feed him. Well, anyway, Saturday night, he had never seen fireworks over, he'd never been to Niagara Falls and uh, been somewhat limited in his exposure to fireworks. So what do we do? <laughs> we drive up to Niagara Falls and we uh, couldn't get in the parking lot right by the Terrapin Point where you guys, where you took all your pictures overlooking the falls and that's where the fireworks were going to be. Wow. So we, we started to leave the park. I was going to go find another place to go. And we got at the other end of the island, and there was a handicapped space <laughs> wide open. Guess what? Nobody Rick, knew where we did should have been. A mile wow. and a half away. I yanked into that spot, and then we just, I never even gave it a thought. I just started walking. And about halfway there, and by the way, it was a mile and a half. They had markers and signs. <laughs> so I'm a mile and a half each way. Rick, you know, I don't walk too well right now. <laughs> Well, you know, Gavin has this problem and he wants to go back and get back healthy. I never said a word, but by my actions, and he has since texted me, my actions demonstrated to him, you know, I'm not a kid anymore. I got a few miles under the belt. And um, plus, this, I had a stroke and then I had, you know, I got a replaced ankle and knee. And okay, okay. I was a bionic man. <laughs> and, got out of the car and we walked and I didn't matter. And you know something? It almost killed me. <laughs> <laughs> but you're goal, here. But the goal was the goal to, was to get to see Niagara Falls. <laughs> I wanted him to experience that so badly. And it really was the highlight. Well, Sunday morning at church when he got depressed or prayed over him and, and prayed for her, the recovery of it and the rest- restoration of his healing. His arm. That was the key. He was in the service. I'm telling you, we were praising. It was a great service. And he, um, Gavin, got into the service and he, he thanked us. He can sure belt out a song, too. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So this whole weekend was real joy and victory, but I almost killed myself. <laughs> but Ron, but Ron, but you had a vision. Yeah, when yep. you have a vision, the obstacles even, don't matter. Don't mean anything. It does not matter. You'll you have his to, grace. You, his he, grace was sufficient for grace. you to complete yes. that mission. He put yep. that supernatural empowerment on you and said, "This is where we're heading. This is what we're doing." And you were not even. You were just going by what he gave you. He, wow. Honestly, honestly, that's just how it went. You know. Um, Get her done, uh, son. Going down, <laughs> done, son. coming back. Um, we pulled over a, a um, trolley. A trolley, and the people were so fabulous. They got up <laughs> and moved their seats. So I mean, I the guy didn't even have to stop because we weren't, you know, part of their tour. But he, um, people got up, gave Ron the seat, <laughs> and you know, they it saw was your pain. 
they felt your pain. Oh boy, <laughs> I, I he saw the pain. But 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 you accomplished it. Like 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 Santel said, your, the, his grace was sufficient. Yeah. Do was, we yeah. have that term determination? Yeah. None of this stuff matters. Surge doesn't matter. Things don't matter. Nothing matters. Where is he taking us? Is all that matters. And are we willing to do the things along the journey? You know, what happens with people, they sit down on the journey, you know, thinking that what's it, what's the use? Why? You know, what's it all for? You know, as a song, what's it all about, right? So, but they <laughs> they sit down on the job. They take too many breaks. Like one thing, Brenda and I, we are so consistent in all that we do. You're and never home. We're yeah. always <laughs> we're never home. We're always growing. We're always growing. We're always learning. We're always getting new information. When she talks about learning something new, we do that every single day. And and this is what happens when we learn something new. It brings us up to the to present. Oh, you're it brings us up to the present. Anything that we may have been growing through or overcoming, da 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 da. When we learn something new, it erases it, and it, you can only erase bad memories by a new memory. And it brings us up to the present, and all of that stuff doesn't even matter anymore. And we just keep moving forward. We learn something new every time we have a challenge. We learn something new. It erases exactly. the challenge. Every time, every single time. And like Ron and what you guys did, you know, the Lord is looking at you and said, okay, we know their heart. Okay. Turn this corner, turn that corner, handicap spot, boom. Okay. <laughs> walk, walk 1.2 miles. <laughs> My grace is sufficient, you know, because you're doing this as, as a service to my son that nobody gives time of day to and he's losing hope and he needs something you know we're the hope collection and he needs <laughs> to have hope in his life and he needs to be fed <laughs> like real food he needs to be cared for you know he's feeling lonely and you guys are like we'll do it and and he sends you the people you know, the tired, the worn, you know, just like the folks that come to America, right? The tired, the worn, the tattered, the torn. And and that's our job. I'm I you, that's how I make that. money in the business. That's why I'm successful in the business. I'm not looking at surge. I'm not looking at travel. I'm looking at service. And then I leverage surge. And then I leverage travel. And I get what I need to do. I get where I need to go. This is what are you leveraging as your purpose, as your mission in life? Mm -hmm. Surge will work. Don't focus on surge or any other business. Don't focus on your trials, the tribulations, the things that I'm going through. What is your place of service? And when you do, you know, Lord. Let's just so I can be freed up to do that. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. surge is a tool for your service. Back to you, Brenda. Hey, Brenda. Yeah, I can see that. Yes, go right ahead. Um, I got a call yesterday afternoon uh, from Kim, uh, you know, better known as Queen. Um, she had a dental appointment this morning, and um, the dentist is he well the other side of town. Of course, she's still in the process of getting her transportation when she succeeds and gets in a big job, big bonus check, or she gets to be a level two director and she'll get a car for free. Um, so we took her to the dentist this morning. She had six teeth pulled and she is not. Oh my well. God. So we want to, we want to keep her in our prayers today. She, we took her to the, we got the medicine from the, the pharmacy and we took her home and, you know, made sure she's she having was, implants, but yeah, she, so, it's a process, you know. So, anyways, like um, you say, oh, yeah, Ron, Lord, we lift up, we lift up Queen right now, Lord, and oh, yeah. and the uh, and the uh, her having the situation with the dentist, and Father, we just pray speedy recovery, Father, relieve the any pain, Lord, and we just ask, Lord, that you would bring it to a fulfillment, uh, to an end, Father, very quickly, 
and uh and so that yes. you can go through this process and look back on it lord and father we just want to thank you for people that come together that lift each other up in your name we pray amen amen, amen. amen. i'd yeah, like to share a couple serious. things she shared with me number one she has a couple connections with some people one's this gentleman he's a world famous travels the world chef and uh, he's looking to get himself uh, reactivated and operate with us join the team and then another person she she said i don't want this to hold me up but if i don't get this dental work on i'm not i want to be on stage she goes i'm going to be on the stage and i want to look good and right now my <laughs> smile doesn't look nice so she did this <laughs> for the goal and like you said she, she had, there's a price to pay but she didn't care she needed to get this done and um so um she's in she's just in the mode that she wants to get it done so she can get on with what she's planning on doing in spite of all that she's still got to focus on her goal and um she just loves the fact that she has a team and she loves to be able to talk you know she's worse than me not bad <laughs> no, but she no. can talk <laughs> 10 times longer and more than i do but, I, re uh, I really do believe you know the time that it takes is the time that it takes for us you know, that's why we have yeah. to be patient because we're being patient with ourselves. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. The time that it takes to be that breakthrough, successful, da 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 da, walk across, that's our time. That mm -hmm. we're we're the thing. We're not the issue. We are the challenge. You know, it's like help me, Lord, to move me out of the way so that you <laughs> may shine through me. But that is the time. That's why it's okay to take the time. It's necessary to take the time because he's doing something in us and through us. And um, and when we get to that point, in fact, I'll say this and I'll turn it over to you, Brenda. I was, I was praying this morning and this little statement came and it says, you know, the, the road goes in circles until we, are, until we lay the foundation to move forward. And I was mm. thinking about the children of Israel going around the mountain, around the mountain, around the mountain, 40 years. And then finally, they reach a point to go forward into the promised land. The road goes in circles until we prepare and lay the proper foundation going forward. Wow. And so the question is, what is that preparation, that foundation going yeah. forward? And then, then we have the breakthrough. <laughs> Back to you, yeah. Wow, that's good. Anybody else? Wow, yes, that's like really good. Go ahead, honey. Oh, okay. I was going to say everything has been so good and inspirational. And I was uh, reviewing my, uh, well, I was catching up on Facebook because I have periods where I'm not on there, but I was on there the other day. And this, I wanted to share this because this kind of goes with what we've been saying. And it's a quote by Alex Ellie. And it says, the older I get, the less time I have for putting things off, we get one life, and I want to live mine in big and small ways. I want to be present and open to joy. No more waiting until tomorrow or later to show up fully in my life. And this is my birthday month, and so I was, and she put that quote on there for her birthday, and um, she's not even, uh, she's not even 50. She's still in her 40s. And so I was like, oh, she's got it. She's on the right track. So I just wanted to share <laughs> That's that. That's awesome. Yes. Yeah. Powerful. Back to you all. You That's know, awesome. I heard you a know, lady. You know, when you get. Go ahead, Chantel. Um, what you were talking about, Adrian? I ran. I was looking for something one morning, and I ran into this lady. Her name is Sandra, and she has a YouTube uh, page that for people sixty and over, and she's like in her eighties. 30 minutes of just the most encouraging to let people know, you know what? You can still live your life. You can still take that vacation. You can still build a dream. And she talked about some of the things she had been through in her life. And when she I listened to her yesterday and um, she was sharing her testimony on what was happening with, her because she made the step, but her sisters made the step before they have YouTube pages they got businesses and they're all 60 and above. And they say, you know what? This this terrible thing happened to me, but I got to put my foot forward and I have to live and leave a legacy for my family. So what am I going to do in this terrible situation to bring that beacon of hope back to myself and then share with others? And I'm telling you, 
it is so encouraging. And so I want to be mindful that this is the day we have, people. This is our moment. This, this right here is our moment. Coach Tomer started when he was 65 with YTB. And he took off running like somebody shot him out of the swing shot. And we were right there. We were right in the room, right there sharing with him. He was coaching us for today. What are we going to do with this? Not just coach, but our family. We come from legacies of all kinds of wonderful, powerful people, business owners, landowners, pastors, even whatever that is for you and yours. Um, uh, retired people that have traveled the world. What are we doing with this moment right here to let our children's children know that you can live your life and you can have some fun right now. You don't have to wait and let them spread their wings while we're here to direct those little arrows on their way. Back to you, Brenda. Wow, that is so true. Anybody else? You know what? It's all about how you look at it. It's all about how you look at it. It hasn't changed. It's all about how you look at your cup. It's all about how you look at your time. You, mm -hmm. And like you said, Chantel, Coach was 65, and he had made his living with uh, what's now known as Prime America, prepaid legal. He was successful. He could give his wife whatever she asked for. But no, he knew he had to help more people get to where he wants to, or where they want to be. And that's when he turned to his friend, Kim Sorensen, and they started YTB. So it, the lateness is in your eyes. You know what I mean? It's not in somebody else's eyes. It's in your eyes. So if you think it's too late, well then, yes, you're right. If you think this is just the beginning, yes, you're right. So it's up to us to make a decision is it too late? No, it's not too late. Not until I close my eyes and go to glory. I'm good. Look at Ron. I know Ron walked slow because we was with him. <laughs> we was with him. And Ron walked slow. But Ron is going to get where he's going. He He's going to get where he he's get going. He gets her done. He gets her done. <laughs> he, he gets her done. He does not stop. And it's almost like, Ron, please sit down. He will not stop. And so <laughs> you have to decide for yourself is this your beginning or is this your end? Do you sit down now and, uh, you know, do nothing or you keep moving? Because, see, the more active you are, the more you're going to be able to achieve. And we're at this age, I'm telling you, where it's like, I don't have time. Not, not all that foolishness. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Whatever you say, bye. And keep moving. <laughs> that you, you, you right. If that's how you feel about it, especially for my family members. Oh, oh, you right. <laughs> and and we're going on, you know. And so, Brenda, that start, was heavy. Is this your beginning yeah. or is this your end? Yeah, yeah. It's really up to you. You make the decision. You've been making decisions all your life for what you want to do and how you want to do it. And now it's like, man, I'm saying, look, me, I say, well, it's go time. <laughs> I say, it's go time. I say, yeah. we need to go ahead yeah. and make it make it happen, you know? So, and with that hey, attitude, Brenda? more, yes, go ahead, honey. Uh, speaking of go time, um, the, just anybody who's ever taken a Viking River cruise, uh, they have a special for anybody that's been on one before. And if you check out Viking, um, the site, the website, you may be able to sign up right now. They got a, um, a, a opportunity for all their former cruisers for a uh, eight day Viking voyage, uh, Viking voyage for two, either Ryan getaway, the ancient Mediterranean or the Niagara and the great lakes. Speaking of uh, Niagara Buffalo, Brad, I noticed in the pictures that Rick did, there are an awful lot of shots of that jacuzzi in your room <laughs> at Salvatore. <laughs> <laughs> Ron, you know I got in that jacuzzi. That was my night. That was my nightly ritual. After all that walking with you, I was able to get in that jacuzzi, relax, and fall asleep. It was really nice. But yeah, he Rick did a good job of of showing that room off because that was a really really nice day in that place there. But you know, guys, we have so many great memories. Oh man, you know anybody else? I heard Adrian. I'm looking at the time here. Oh, Does anybody else? The lifestyle want... of the rich and famous. 
I know. <laughs> you right there, too. That's, I know, right? <laughs> that's all Never. about I want to know. That's all about I love, look, when I plan to come, I want some of them string beans. I want to know who made them string beans, and I want some when I get there. <laughs> I want four Y'all have five. a serious, uh -huh. serious yeah. feast. Serious feast for the fourth. But yeah, all of that, all of that brings on great memories, on great, great memories. And uh, as I look out of my window, I can see the top of the trees again. So <laughs> the fog is lifting. And this okay. is Colorado Springs. So within a half hour, the sun could be out. Who knows? But it, you just, 90 you just, in Buffalo you, today. You see? Yeah, yeah, it's cold here. I don't know what's going on, but. It's okay. At least I'm I'm able to feel and enjoy the weather. So hey, it's Brenda, all how Brenda. you look at it. Brenda, I'll yes, close, go ahead. I'll, I'll close it's the with, lifestyle. I'll close it's with yeah. I'll close with what you started with. Okay. The guy said. Oh that, well, that, wait a minute. If you're if you're gonna no, close. No, no, I'm just let me saying. You, it. No, no, no. Go ahead. I'm just saying the temp in my house is always the same. That's there you go. That's, That's so what, true. And so and so look, that look. is. No matter what your situation you find yourself in, being to assess the temperature in your house, that yes. you wow, control right. the thermostat. That's powerful. Yep. You yep. control yep. it. But and it's never true. ever take freedom for granted. Mm. A lot of people in this right. world don't have it. Come on, somebody. Right. That's and your friend, Glenn, Glenn a drew a spread down on the fourth that you would not believe. For, for us, it was us and <laughs> Willie and Adrian Tillman up in here with our three children who were mostly finished. He had three whole trays of meat. I said, who is he cooking for? He was preparing a feast as Rick and Brenda's on the way. But, but we had a bomb. Me and I know, Adrian that's was right. He, we, look, he we put that ate, food out. <laughs> we ate so much food. He knew food. we were coming. Ridiculous. I'm telling uh, you, it was it was delicious. <laughs> he knew we was coming. I thought, okay, who's, who's all this food here? Look, man, we always have a we always have a good time, and we always have a good time around food. But uh, what I wanted to say again um, tonight, you know, we usually have our presentation, but because the company is having a worldwide a, a company wide call at that same time, we're just gonna you know, honor the company and plug everybody into that call. So we will not be doing our presentation tonight. We will all be jumping on the call. Um, and uh, they did a great job of sending emails out with the phone number. And I'll take a Snapchat of that, uh, Snapchat. I'll take a snapshot of that and I will put it on our, our group page so everybody will have the number and the phone number. Like right. I said earlier, I have no idea what they're going to share, but it's always great to support our company because we, when one of us win, we all win. And mm -hmm. that's what it's all about. I love these conversations. I love listening to everybody talk and share and laugh. And it just reminds me when you share all your different experiences and Rick makes me laugh how he didn't even remember that one. That's because we go on so many trips. We have so many adventures that happen in our lives and it's all fun. Everybody does too. And it's all fun. And we're going to all get together again and have a great time. Uh, Ron, I think we should all get together and do something in Buffalo because guys going to Niagara Falls and going over to the Canadian side, everybody would find something to do. That, that is yeah. definitely a yeah. place where a company should go because everybody would find something to do. And mm -hmm. we're not asking them to, to leave the U.S. But uh, again, we'll see you guys all on the company call tonight. Um, kind of call in early. So I don't know. I'm quite sure they have enough spots, but you definitely don't want to be blocked out because you were too late. So jump on that call, listen to what they have to say, and we'll share later. You guys know we are the most trusted travel team in Surge 365. And we look forward to seeing all of us on the beaches of the world. And I even say the slopes of the world. I'll be inside by the by the fireplace, but I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> so, so cruises, everybody have a great cruises, world. World. Oh, cruises. Don't forget the cruises. We'll definitely be on the cruises. Cruises of the world, Viking cruises of the world. But everybody have a great rest of your day. Magic we have Johnson. Clients, we have clients on a cruise right this minute. And Michael Jordan. Oh, man. Magic Johnson. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I need your yes. autograph, man. Sign those autographs. <laughs> That's, 
I'm glad I need well, your autograph, well. and I'm gonna remember that next time I see you. I'm gonna be like, yeah. Can I get your autograph, Michael Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> Can I get your autograph? That's a good one. So everybody have a great yeah. rest of your day. We'll look forward okay. to seeing your phone numbers on the call tonight. Okay. Bye bye now. Okay. All right. Bye bye.